Okay, we were wrong. This is shiny because this moves. Trust me, I can't do it with one hand. This moves back and forth. See that? That's why it's shiny. I do have the belt pulled down, but I have the brake locked on so I can get it off the motor. So once I release this, the belt will come off there because it's hitting up on the body. See up there? Up on the frame body. I still don't explain why I have all that slack in my spring. That's why this is shiny. See, when I got this, this is probably froze up, locked up. So I'm guessing what this does. I know that torque multiplier. I do not know how to operate. I've seen a YouTube video. No one has showed it in great detail of how that worked. I've never looked for any John Deere manuals. This does move back and forth. If you sit there, see that? It slides back and forth. I'm just assuming that it keeps the belt the same width on both of them. Common sense. You have a belt here and your belt here. It keeps the belt center. That's why it's shiny. But, this belt, I've seen the smoke roll off it. Of course, it was cold. I had it wrapped up. I was trying to get out of the shed. Well, once I wrapped up and got it to grab, it went. So I went ahead and shoveled yesterday. So, we're going to fix the problem with the spring. For some reason, the spring slacked up, the way everything's mounted. And then we'll try to explain what caused that problem. So we're going to go ahead and use this belt. It's not that hard to replace. To take the other belt off, you just lift up on your tensioner. There's a tensioner back. You just lift up, walk it off here to this side. So you don't need any tools to take the belt off from here to the transmission, transaxle. There's a little bracket you got to get over here that rides in. No baggie. Comes off, no tools. It'll come right off there. I don't know if you take, when you take it completely out, you might have to move something down on your springs, your tensioner or something. But to get it off here to replace your front drive one, it came right off. Let's see if we can kind of shoot down here. See, it came right off, came right out of the way. No problem there. We just got to figure out what's wrong here. Why do I have... I have spring tension because I locked the brake down because I'm pulling the opposite. Why don't I have spring tension on this like I'm supposed to to keep that tight when you let off the clutch? Scratching my head, but I'll figure it out. It's not that complicated. It's just kind of hard to lay under here. I have it just on a couple of home telemacro, so it's kind of a couple of homemade ramps. I'm laying on cardboard in the little workshop. It's kind of cramped. I never had my desk in here before when I worked on this, but a couple of ramps. I had to jack it up with a hydraulic bottle jack and just tap them underneath there with a the big hammer. Block the back wheel. Always do that. This is heavy enough to crunch you. Block the back wheel because I'm in neutral and I'll be in and out of taking the brake off, so thought I'd throw that tip in there. Okay, brake time. Then we're going to figure out what's wrong with the spring tension. Stay tuned. Okay, here's going to be our repair. Here's our adjustment at the back. There's a nut here. This can adjust. <clears throat> we drilled another hole in here. So when it goes on here, I'll get the camera out of the way here. When this goes on here on your clutch rod, well, this will focus. There's your clutch rod. That's it. And this is just the other side of this piece of metal. Okay. That way it's going to take the slack out of it. We bring the spring up and hook it over there. Because there's no tension pulling this back. There was no... You can see how I can move that freely. There was no spring tension holding the belt tight. I'm glad we learned about this pulley that it moves. I'm sure that had something to do with that torque multiplier, whatever you call it. If anybody knows about it, tell me what it is.
Because this didn't come with it. I have seen a YouTube video, just the lever. I've never seen uh, anybody get down underneath here and actually show the mechanism. But I'm just going to take the slack up in the spring. If all works well. We do have a new cotter pin for that. And there was a washer on it. We thought we might have to weld or make something, but then we'll get a shot and a couple pictures at the end of when we're done. Okay, we put another hole in there. Now we have spring tension. We have this adjuster back here. We have a little more room to go. All I can think of is the belt's just gotten stretched. Because I only put this not even an inch shorter on this bracket. And that's just the piece I had. That's the piece that was on there. This is the piece that was on here when I got it. I did lock this nut down. There's a washer on the other side, which helps it easier when you turn it, so you're not jamming the nut in there, because it is quite a bit of force. Even though I used a short wrench. It does kind of rub on this piece of metal up here, the spring does. There's a little bracket right in here. A biggie. This seems to have enough tension on it. This is not easy to get to the spring because it goes back here and I have that on a turnbuckle. This spring that's up in here, it's on a turnbuckle. You almost can't get to it without having the body off. I could look over on the other side. I may be able to adjust it just a little bit. But that's where your second belt goes to the transmission. To your transaxle. That didn't seem to be slipping or nothing. But, I'm glad I found out that this pulley, the center moves back and forth. There is some wear on this belt, because these are both supposed to be 5 8 if you look at the one on the bottom, look at the one on the top, there is some wear. So, I do need to replace the belt. These are both 5 8 I bought them at a farm store called Bob Gars. Now, I will show when I get out my underneath theory what the brand was. You can buy them in any inch you want. If Say you want a 40-inch belt, you can buy it in a 41, 42. I think this is a 40-inch belt. You can buy in inch increments. Blue, Kevlar... I'm sure they can be found in other places. I know people order belts for stuff, custom made, and how I figure out what size belt you need, take an old belt and cut it, and then bring it up there and fit it on there. You can even drill a couple holes, put a piece of bailing wire in it, just to see if it'll work, just see if it's the right length. Then go to the store and have them measure it. Or get out your string, tape measure, whatever you use to measure it yourself. But I definitely think that belt's gotten narrower. And these were both 5 8 belts. If it looks looks to you at the, in your eyeball, that it probably is. But we're going to go with this. We'll probably find out when we put our new belt. Well, we might have to readjust. We may have to readjust the spring down here. Because there's a lot of bolts sticking on the back. You can just barely see the bolt. I'll try to get this right here. You do have an adjustment now. So now I have a little more adjustment because this thing was cranked all the way down. This, I don't know, I'll have to go back and look at the video, but it seems like to me it was tightened up about as far as you could go. So, that'll solve the problem. Put a different hole in that. Took up the slack. I'm still going to have to get another belt because these bolts are 5 8 Unless they made it wrong or I got the wrong thing, I will get out here and find the package. I saved the cards for him.